Kriegspiel is a genre of wargaming developed by the Prussian army in the 19th century to teach tactics to officers. The word Kriegspiel literally means, wargame, in German, but in the context of the English language it refers specifically to any wargame that follows the style developed by the Prussian army in the 19th century. History Precursors By definition, a «wargame» is a strategy game that attempts to realistically represent warfare. The first such game was invented in Prussia by Johann Christian Ludwig Helwig in 1780. It was an evolution of chess, but one in which the pieces represented real military units infantry, cavalry, artillery, etc., and the squares were color-coded to represent different types of terrain. Other Germans created their own wargames inspired by Helwig's. These early wargames were not taken seriously by the military because they were not realistic enough. One criticism was that the pieces were constrained to move across a grid in chess-like fashion. Only a single piece could occupy a square even if that square represented, say, a square mile, and the pieces had to move square by square. The prototype of Reiswitz Sr. 1812. In response to these criticisms, a Prussian nobleman and wargaming enthusiast named George Leopold von Reiswitz set out to develop a more realistic wargame wherein the units could move about the battlefield in a free-form manner. Reiswitz first experimented with a table covered in a layer of damp sand. He sculpted the sand into a three-dimensional model battlefield, with hills and valleys. He used little wooden blocks to represent troop formations. The Prussian princes heard about Reiswitz's project and asked for a demonstration. He showed it to them in 1811, and they enthusiastically recommended the game to their father, King Wilhelm III. In 1812, Reiswitz presented to the king an elaborate wargaming apparatus that came in the form of a wooden table cabinet. The cabinet's drawers stored all the materials to play the game. The battlefield was made out of painted porcelain tiles, where were modular arranged on the table surface. Troop formations were represented by little porcelain blocks. The blocks could be moved across the battlefield in free-form manner, using dividers to regulate movement. The royal family was delighted by Reiswitz's game, and frequently played it. Shortly after this presentation, he published a book describing his game. Reiswitz's game was not adopted by army instructors nor sold commercially. The apparatus he developed for the king was too expensive for mass production. Additionally, his system was not complete. The rules for resolving the effects of attacks were not fully worked out and required some improvisation on the part of the players. Reiswitz may have been too distracted by the upheavals of the Napoleonic Wars to perfect his game. By 1816, Reiswitz seemed to have lost interest in wargaming altogether. The development of the wargame was continued by his son, Georg Heinrich Rudolf Johann von Reiswitz. The Prussian army adopts wargaming Reiswitz Jr., 1824. Reiswitz Jr. was a junior officer in the Prussian army. He took over the development of his father's wargame after his father lost interest in it. He developed the game with the help of a circle of junior officers. The prince eventually heard of Reiswitz's project and, having fond memories of playing Reiswitz Sr.'s wargame, joined the son's gaming circle. Unlike his father's game, Reiswitz Jr.'s game used dice to determine the damage inflicted by enemy fire. Reiswitz Jr.'s game was also played on a paper map. The Prussian army had recently begun using highly accurate topographical maps, which were the product of new advances in cartography and printing. These maps may have not been available to Reiswitz Sr., but they were available by the 1820s and Reiswitz Jr. took advantage of them. The maps were made to a scale of 1 to 8,000. Likewise, the pieces were made to accurately represent the dimensions of the troop formations. This made Reiswitz Jr.'s wargame the first to have an absolute scale. Reiswitz Jr.'s great innovation, however, was the introduction of an umpire. The umpire was supposed to be an impartial and experienced officer. The players did not directly control the pieces on the game map. Rather, passed written instructions to umpire as if they were generals in the field sending written orders to their divisions. 
The umpire would then move the pieces across the game map according to how he imagined the troops would interpret and carry out the player's orders. When the troops engaged the enemy on the map, it was umpire who rolled the dice, calculated the effects, and removed slain units from map. Additionally, the players were not allowed to look at the main game map and thus could not know the exact positions of the pieces. The players sat in an adjacent room, and the umpire would periodically report to them the state of the battle, much the same way a general in the field would receive reports from afar. Thus, the wargame simulated the fog of war, and how a general in the field controlled his army. In 1824, the prince invited Ricewitz Jr. to present his wargame to the king and his senior generals. They were impressed and officially endorsed his game as a training tool for the officer corps. Ricewitz established a workshop by which he could mass produce and distribute it. He sold the game in a box set priced at $30. It was widely played by the officer corps, and a number of wargaming clubs formed, the first being the Berlin Wargame Association. This was thus the first wargame to be widely adopted by a military as a serious tool for training and research. Reiswitz Jr. committed suicide in 1827, but the Prussian officer corps continued to play and develop his wargaming system. Wilhelm von Chischwitz published a Kriegspiel manual in 1862 that incorporated new technological advances such as railroads, telegraph, and breech-loading cannons, and which used conventional gaming dice. In 1875, Clemens Wilhelm Jacob Meckel developed the first wargaming system that could be played at the operation and strategic levels, a detachment game played on 1 to 6250 maps a grand war game played on 1 to 12500 maps and a strategic game played on 1 to 100000 maps a criticism of Ricewitzian Kriegspiel was that it had very complicated rules which were difficult to memorize and the complex computations greatly slowed down the gameplay this put off many officers from adopting Kriegspiel a senior Prussian officer named Julius von Verdi du Vernois proposed dispensing with the rules and instead allowing the umpire to arbitrate events as he saw fit. The umpire, of course, had to be very knowledgeable and impartial so that his rulings would be realistic and fair. This innovation was well received by army instructors, who could now apply their own expertise to their wargaming sessions. This style of wargaming came to be known as Free Kriegspiel counterpart to Reiswitz's rigid Kriegspiel. The spread of wargaming beyond Germany A French translation of Reiswitz Jr.'s manual was presented to the French military in 1829, and a Dutch translation appeared in 1836. But overall, Kriegspiel attracted little attention outside Prussia until 1870, when Prussia defeated France in the Franco-Prussian War. Many credited Prussia's victory to its wargaming tradition, and this led to great worldwide interest in Kriegspiel. The first Kriegspiel manual in English, based on the system of Wilhelm von Chischwitz, was published in 1872 for the British Army and received a royal endorsement. In the United States, Charles Adil Lewis Totten published Strategos, the American War Game in 1880, and William R. Livermore published the American Kriegspiel in 1882. Reiswitz Jr. Rules This summary is based on a wargaming manual written by Georg Heinrich Rudolf Johann von Reiswitz in 1824. Materials <inaudible> 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 After Reiswitz Jr. received an official endorsement from the royal family and the general staff of Prussia, he began mass producing and distributing his wargame to the officer corps. The materials required include lead blocks that represented various kinds of troop formations, rulers and dividers, dice, a paper map, scaled to 1 to 8,000, a rulebook. The game was played on a topographical paper map, scaled to 1 to 8,000. The game represented troops on the battlefield by placing little rectangular pieces of lead on the map. The pieces represented various kinds of troops, and their positions on the map represented the troops' locations on the battlefield. The dimensions of the block reflected the actual dimensions of the troop formation it represented to a scale of 1 to 8,000. 
For instance, a formation of 450 infantrymen in three ranks is according to Reiswitz Jr. 125 paces long and 75 paces deep. Accordingly, the lead block that represented such a formation would be about 1 cm by 0.6 cm in size Reiswitz Jr. used the Prussian imperial system of measurement, were in one pace. Topic. Two feet Twenty decimal inches approximately equals 62.7072 cm. Order of play The game is played between two teams and arbitrated by an umpire. The umpire establishes the scenario of the game. He decides what the tactical objectives of the respective teams are, what troops they are provided with and how those troops are initially deployed on the battlefield. The umpire will then assign each team the appropriate game pieces for their units. Even the players themselves receive pieces to represent themselves and their bodyguards on the map. Their position on the map determines how they can communicate with each other and their troops. Based on the topography of the terrain and the position of the troops, the umpire places on the map only pieces for troops which he judges are visible to both armies. If a unit is out of the enemy army's line of sight e.g. it is concealed by a hill or a forest, the umpire will not place its piece on the map for the enemy team to see. If a unit disappears from the enemy army's line of sight, the umpire will remove the piece from the map and place it on the board. The umpire must keep a mental track of the positions of troops whose pieces are not on the map. The players communicate with each other and the umpire through written messages. They do not speak to each other, so that the enemy team cannot hear their plans. Players cannot give each other messages directly if they are located more than 1,000 paces from each other on the game map. They must instead give their messages to umpire, who decides when the recipient will receive the message. The game has pieces to represent messengers on the map, and if there are obstacles in their way, the umpire may decide to wait several turns before giving the recipient player his message. When a team decides on a plan of action, they give written instructions for their troops to the umpire. The umpire will then move the troops across the battlefield in the way he imagines the troops would interpret and execute the instructions. When the umpire judges that the two armies are close enough for them to interact with each other, the game enters turn-based mode. Before this, the umpire can be more flexible into when he requests instructions from the players, but once the game enters turn-based mode, the umpire must receive and execute orders from the players in turn. A turn represents two minutes of time. In one turn, the troops can do only as much as they realistically could in two minutes of time. For instance, the game assumes that infantry can march 100 paces per minute on favorable ground, thus in one turn an infantry piece can be moved 200 paces across the battlefield 1.6 centimeters across the map. Topic. Movement The game defines fixed movement rates for each type of unit under various circumstances. Terrain can slow down movement, for instance, cavalry can march 400 paces per turn over even ground, but only 250 paces through light woods, and 100 paces up steep hills. Swamps, thick forests, very steep hills, and fenced areas are considered impassable for most units. Attacks <laughs> <laughs> The umpire uses dice to determine how much damage that attacking units inflict upon the enemy. The dice designed by Reiswitz are of unique design, with each face displaying a multitude of numbers and symbols that denoted different combat results for different situations. There are five dice. Die is used to determine ranged damage by infantry, hand-to-hand -hand combat results when both sides were even, and whether a howitzer attack sets a village on fire. Die 2 is used to determine ranged damage by skirmishers firing from cover and hand-to-hand -hand combat results when the odds are 3 to 2. Die 3 is used to determine artillery damage under good conditions. Die IV is to determine hand-to-hand -hand combat results when the odds are 3 to 1. Die V is used to determine artillery damage under bad conditions, and hand-to-hand -hand combat results when the odds are 4 to 1. The umpire shall roll the appropriate die and multiply the result by the number of units attacking. 
e.g. if four infantry pieces fire upon the enemy at once, the umpire will multiply the result of die I by four. Tracking casualties Each piece has a number of hit points determined by the type of unit, the number of men in it, and their formation. For instance, a half battalion of 450 men in three ranks has 90 hit points. The game provides a sheet of paper called the Losses Table. The Losses Table is divided into columns for closed rank infantry, tiriers, jaegers, cavalry, and artillery. Each column has a series of dots that are marked with numbers. For instance, the column for regular infantry has 15 dots, labeled 1 to 15. At the start of the game, the umpire shall stick one pin for each piece in the first dot of the appropriate column. For instance, if the Red Army begins with three infantry pieces and two cavalry pieces, the umpire will stick three pins in the first dot in the infantry column and two pins in the first dot in the cavalry column. When the army suffers casualties from enemy fire, the umpire allocates damage points by moving the pins down their columns. There is one pin for each piece on the map, and the dot it is stuck in represents the damage points that the piece has accumulated. For example, if there is a pin in the cavalry column that is stuck in the dot marked 23, it means that some cavalry piece somewhere on the map has accumulated 23 points of damage. If a pin reaches the bottom of the column, then a piece from the relevant category is removed from the map and discarded, signifying its annihilation. The pins aren't labeled and thus not tied to any specific piece, so it is up to the umpire to decide which piece of the relevant type gets discarded. So if a pin in the cavalry column reaches the last dot 60 points of damage, the umpire selects one cavalry piece on the map and discards it cavalry pieces have 60 hit points. Closed rank infantry Infantry half battalion pieces are a special case. The game provides exchange pieces for half battalions. These exchange pieces are smaller than the regular pieces. These exchange pieces represent half battalions that have diminished in size due to casualties. In the Napoleonic era of warfare, regular infantrymen were packed close together in tight formation, almost shoulder to shoulder, and when such a formation suffered losses, the formation would shrink in size as the surviving men closed ranks. Thus the exchange pieces for have a proportionately smaller footprint. There are no exchange pieces for skirmishers, cavalry, and artillery, because these sorts of troops maneuvered in looser formations and did not close ranks after suffering casualties. The exchange pieces for half battalions are labeled with the fractions 5 sixths or 4 sixths. This signifies that the half battalion has lost either 1 sixth or 2 sixths of its hit points. An infantry half battalion has 90 hit points, and thus is exchanged when it suffers 15 points of damage. The column on the losses table for closed rank infantry ends at 15, not 90. If a pin in the closed rank infantry column reaches the bottom dot, the umpire may allocate that damage to a half battalion by replacing it with a 5 6 exchange piece. Then, instead of removing the pin from the losses table, the umpire cycles it to the beginning of the column. If that same half battalion suffers another 15 points of damage, the umpire will replace the piece with a 4 6 exchange piece. If that half battalion loses yet another sixth of its hit points, the piece is not replaced but discarded. According to the rules, a half battalion piece is discarded when it loses half of its hit points. The column on the losses table for closed rank infantry has only 15 dots. When a pin reaches the last in the column, the umpire will exchange an infantry piece for an exchange piece, then cycle the pin back to the top of the column. Worked example Consider the following scenario, the Blue Army and the Red Army are on opposite sides of a small river, 200 paces apart from each other, and line up to shoot each other. The Blue Army's line consists of six infantry pieces arranged in three battalions. On the Blue Army's losses table, the umpire places six pins in the infantry column. The Red Army's line consists of four infantry pieces and two cavalry pieces. On the Red Army's losses table, the umpire places four pins in the infantry column and two pins in the cavalry column. The infantry pieces each have 90 hit points, and the cavalry pieces each have 60 hit points. Turn 1, blue fires first. The umpire rolls die I the result is 20, which he multiplies by 6 to get a total damage score of 120 points. He decides to allocate this evenly across all the pieces. 
He moves every pin on Red's losses table down 20 dots in their respective columns. In the infantry column, the pins reached the bottom and cycled back to the top, finishing on dot 6. The umpire replaces all of Red's infantry pieces with 5 6 exchange pieces. Turn 2, now it's Red's turn to fire back. Red's cavalry can't cross the river to attack, so it's just his infantry firing across the river. The umpire rolls a die 1. The result is 10, which the umpire multiplies by 4 to get 40 points of damage. He decides to allocate the majority of this damage to the center of Blue's line, the center battalion takes 30 points of damage, and the adjacent ones take 5 points each. The umpire moves two pins in the infantry column on Blue's losses table down 15 dots and replaces the two central infantry pieces with 5 6 exchange pieces. He moves another two pins down 5 dots. Turn 3, now Blue fires again. This time, it inflicts 60 points of damage. The umpire decides that one cavalry piece suffered 40 points of damage, and one infantry piece each suffered 20 points of damage. He moves one pin in the cavalry column on Red's losses table down 40 points. It has reached the bottom of the cavalry column, so the umpire discards a cavalry piece. As for the infantry, he replaces one with a 4 6 exchange piece, which leaves five unallocated points of damage left on the losses table. See also Military simulation Topic Footnotes Topic Bibliography Philip von Hilgers, two thousand Eine Anleitung zur Anleitung Das Taxtische Kriegspiel 1812 to 1824. PDF. Board Games Studies, International Journal for the Study of Board Games in German, 3, 59 to 78. George Leopold von Reiswitz, 1812. Taktisches Kriegsspiel oder Anleitung zu einer mechanischen Vorrichtung um taktische Maneuvers sinnlich darzustellen Tactical War Game or Instruction to a Mechanical Device to Simulate Tactical Maneuvers in German. Gaddock, Scribd Backup. Georg Heinrich Rudolf Johann von Reiswitz Anleitung zur Darstellung militärisch Manover mit dem Apparat des Kriegspiel Instructions for the Representation of Military Maneuvers with the Kriegspiel Apparatus in German, translation by Bill Leeson, 1989 Peter P. Perla 2012 First Pub. 1990, John Curry, ed. Peter Perla's The Art of Wargaming, A Guide for Professionals and Hobbyists. The History of Wargaming Project. ISBN 978-1-4716-2242-7. John Peterson 2012. Playing at the World, A History of Simulating Wars, People and Fantastic Adventures, From Chess to Role-Playing Games. Unreason Press. ISBN 9780615642243. Kelly, Michael J. 1974. Das Reiswisch Kriegspiel von seinem Beginn bis zum Tod der Erfinders 1827. The Reiswitzian Wargame from its inception until the death of the inventor in 1827. Militar Waschenblatt. No. 56 pp. 527-532. Julius von Verdi du Vernois Betrag zum Kriegspiel Contribution to Wargaming in German. Ernst Siegfried Mittler und Sohn. John Curry 2008. Verdi's free Kriegspiel including the Victorian Army's 1896 war game. Lulu.com. ISBN 9781409227381. Kelly, Michael J. 1926. News website dedicated to the original game of Kriegspiel Modern publishers of Kriegspiel rules. <laughs>